Hey, Ford, will you please stop spitting on our intelligence? Tiny cheeks, boy, and save that deuce. I want to get lost in your eco boost and drive the stang. You're playing engine noises through the goddamn speakers. What? Are you worried that your customers don't know the difference between a four, six, or eight cylinder engine? Oh, my name is Jim Hackett. I'm the CEO of Ford, and I want to protect weak men from their egos, which are more fragile than GM 4L60 transmissions. We at Ford know these men say homophobic slurs as preemptive strikes, and only marry timid women, and who also can't afford 5 Mustangs need to be coddled with electronic lies in their EcoBoost Mustangs. Duh! Ford shouldn't have allowed four cylinders into the Mustang because it ruins the sanctity of v Oh, don't worry your Gears iced tea drinking, tasty cake ass, Skooky Steviskoski. We'll play you America noises while you drive, so this car moans like a mentally scarred victim of domestic trauma who is currently employed at the Velvet Lounge in Camden. But wait, there's <laughs> We're gonna make it look like there's a big engine by putting dual exhausts on. Uh, yeah, they're gonna split after the catalytic converter and add nothing but weight. Duh. Better to look fast than to be fast. Here's my so controversial but so brave statement. No car with a single turbo needs dual dumps. I'm looking at you too, Subaru. If all exhaust is consolidated in a singular turbine, what's the point of bisecting it afterwards? If the turbo's hot side was restrictive, if, and if the cat is restrictive, if, most aren't, Nothing is gained by taking two-inch pre-cat piping and splitting it at cat back. Because any restrictive fuel dynamics already occurred. But still, what if I'm wrong? Well, dual dumps still don't make sense. Because if you go from two inches to two and a half inches, but keep it a single exhaust, we would, we would allow more flow with less material and less weight. Dual exhausts on a turbo don't alter the sound much either, because Gary turns exhaust pulses into sauerkraut. Which is fine. Let turbo fours sound like turbo fours. If I have a four-cylinder turbo car, all I want to hear is choo-choo or That's all I want, and that's what most customers want. It's a turbo car. Let me hear the turbo. Attempt to rev match. And you know, even even the V6, I just... There's the boost. The boost is at the up. right at the top. Yeah, it is. It is. If this straight-four turbo six-speed, rear-wheel drive, two-plus-two-seater, said probe on the front? Well, all the coffee in Seattle couldn't dilute our cream. But there's a My Little Boomer on the front. So a good share of new automotive enthusiasts who want a rear-wheel drive, you know, coupe, will run right into FRS, BRZ, or 8.6's open arms. I get it. You don't want to drive a car beloved by a generation that you perceive as ruining the world. It's like Florence Reese's 1931 song, Which Side Are You On?, came to not only define labor relations, but all corners of the human condition in this, the year of our Ford 2020. I like the EcoBoost Mustang. And you can disable the ANC and by extension, the engine noise sound. There's a little microphone in the headliner back by the rear window. You know, the rear windshield. Pull down the headliner and you'll see the connection. Remove it. That'll stop the engine sounds. But according to the forums, that also stops active noise cancellation. You know that theory that you, you take a noise and you, you play the opposite waveform and then it cancels out noise? That's what they have going on inside the car. They're trying to Make the car, uh, make this car, make the sports car quiet on the highway. But part of the software allows sounds of the engine to come through the speakers. So these two systems were combined into one. So if you unplug that microphone up in the ceiling, you're going to lose active noise cancellation as well. Although also, according to the forums, you don't really notice it. So I say get up there, unplug that little microphone, and you're good. It turns in quick, it stops really well. 
it does go reasonably fast. Getting over 300 foot-pounds of torque out of an engine like this and over 300 horsepower out of a four-cylinder is fantastic, but it doesn't feel as fast as a, as a Focus RS. Well, a Focus RS technically is 350-350, but this is correct wheel drive, so that's a plus. The 2.3-liter four-cylinder turbo makes 310 brake horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 320 pound-feet of torque at 3,000 RPM. The compression ratio is 9.5 to 1, and 0 to 60 happens in 5.2 seconds. The governor kicks in at 149 miles an hour, and in terms of fuel economy, this will get you 22 city and up to 31 highway, with a base price of 27,190. Completely reasonable for a rear-wheel drive turbo car with a manual. This sixth generation is the first Mustang to come in right-hand drive models. Because it was the first Mustang to be sold globally, suddenly Dwayne the Rock Johnson wouldn't be the only slice of American muscle the rest of the world would get to enjoy. Ford decided pretty early on that this generation would use independent rear suspension, which necessitated a complete reworking of the front suspension in the form of BMW-esque double-pivot McPherson struts. By the time the redesign was completed, the platform didn't have a ton of similarities with what came before, outside of the wheelbase. 2015 EcoBoost Mustang. For the guy who pays for all his shirts and underwear in the electronics section, EcoBoost Mustang. The dream car for a homeschooled Christian kid who can't wait to go to college so he can cuss his first swear. The 2.3 Turbo debuted in the 2015 model year Lincoln MKC, and it's the first four-cylinder engine the Mustang had gotten in years. In a way, it was like the ghost of the mid-80s Mustang SVO walking down the street with all the V6 trick-or-treaters. Sure, it was a turbocharged engine, but four cylinders? Why don't I just go suck my neighbor's dick and bake him a cake while I'm at it? But with this Mustang, it feels like we've reached a point of acceptance. That you can drive four cylinders without it being an affront to your carefully constructed American masculinity. No, you'll never be as cool as the way Humphrey Bogart was cool. The type of cool that hates being cool, therefore becoming cooler in the bargain. No, you'll be cool like a YouTuber who's really good at video essays, but insists on doing skits with their giggling friends. You'll have the people who shout your praises and defend your taste. And all the other Chester County Stevens will go back to taking every meal out of bread bowls. What does it matter if you're being judged by the type of guy who thinks every black actor is Will Smith? Live your life. And if anybody gives you a hard time, tell them to take these nuts and store them in a cool, dry place. There's a real argument to make for the Mustang being the most divisive car in the history of modern car culture. Even more so than the Corvette. Because while the Corvette often brings with it the obnoxious connotation of the middle-aged man compensating for a wife and a hairline that left him over the course of the same summer, the Mustang gives off vibes of a driver with too few years under his belt and too many bodies under the chassis. And naturally, the overwhelming majority of Corvette and Mustang drivers don't fit into those stereotypes. Yet, that's the thing with stereotypes. They're microcosms of a larger fabric of identity. They can't represent an entire complex structure. They can only contrast with it. And in doing so, try to serve as shorthand for everybody in that community. And it's a dangerous way of thinking because it encourages us to write other people off without giving them a chance. That instead of finding common ground, we're meant to view ourselves as superior to these people who are being judged for a small fraction of their automotive community. Wait, oh yeah, we're complicit. The EcoBoost Mustang is a fine sports car. And it's a truer sports car than the V8 Mustang with the Coyote. You can drive this car at 10 tenths. You can floor it and not spin out. You can work every single gear. Yeah, you can turn the traction control off and spin the rear tires if, if that's what you have to do. But don't. Enjoy this car in the corners. It's the great light handling Mustang people always wanted. And as much as you don't want to admit it, that little emblem on the front means this car has resale value. Now and forever. 2015 Mustang, so nice and so angry. 
Eco Boost type engine. Displacement 2.3. The engine that debuted with the new Lincoln MKC. Judgment made that cool way we're complicit to an Eco Boost and me. But wait, there's. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long one.